Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm very excited. We got the mighty Robbie McIntosh here today on our Wildwood at Home series that we're doing. We're also going to be doing a podcast that will be coming out at some point in the not too distant future as well. But be that as it may, here we are. And uh, I should also mention that if I'm looking off to the side here, it's not like I'm tuning out. It's just that I can see you on this computer screen over here. But if I have to look into the camera, I got to look into this. So it's a little bit of a conundrum of which I will will figure out at some point, Robbie. But for now, if you see me turning off to the side, it's not that I'm disinterested. It's that I'm watching you. (laughs) Don't worry about it. I fully understand. Yeah, I get get it. Because I'm just on the one thing here. So, um, you know, I haven't got a... um, I don't have the wherewithal to connect a, a camera to my laptop, uh, and which case I would probably be in the same situation. So I'm just on my iPad. Yeah, well, that's 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 a good way to do it too. You know, with yeah. this whole with this whole lockdown situation, I've had to uh, go kind of kicking and screaming into more of a high tech world. You know, I got this mic and this this kind of donut shaped light thing here that makes me look like some kind of. Uh, but your uh, stuff when you do your when you do your your um, you and your son Dylan when you play yes. live, I mean the sound is great. So what 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 are you using to um, was a trade secret to? Well, no, no, no. It, actually, what we we've, we've been learning on the fly when we first initially did them, it was just on an iPad, and then. Yeah. Um, we ended up getting um, Dylan bought some mics for his drum set, and he bought a um, a Scarlett focus right interface and he bought a new computer and so we mic'd up all of his stuff we mic'd up my stuff and then when, when i do the uh the fishman live feeds my buddy ryan who's actually out in boston gets on our computer and mixes us from afar so we're, we're going from uh the focus right into logic and then that into obs which goes live and then uh there's a, a service called restream which allows us to go to all the different platforms, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, whatever, all at the same time. Right. And, yeah. Uh, so that's well, it sounds, going it sounds fantastic. And oh, I'm well, thank very you. Envious, but, but of course, I, can't, I, you know, I don't have technically, I don't really have the wherewithal. One of my son, who works in a recording studio, would have, but of course, he's up in London. Ah. I can't get home. So, right. um, he works for Mark Knopfler, actually. He, my my oh. the older of my two boys. He works at Mark's studio in London, British Grove Studios. That's that's a beautiful looking place. I've seen pictures of it online. It, look, it looks it's, like it's it amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, it is state of the art. You know, um, seven point one because they do a lot of film mixing there, which he's involved in a lot of orchestral stuff and. Um, so he's kind of at the top end of that of that part of the business, you know. But he he understands all that stuff, and I don't. And I wish he was here sometimes. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm ridiculously low tech. Although we just got a deal with uh, Tascam, so we've got this new Model Twenty Four and Model Twelve. So after we get done today, uh, a couple hours from now, there's going to be a a call, and they're going to get Dylan and I up to snuff on using this stuff, so I can actually start doing some tracking from home. So great, he's a the good learning drummer, curve right? is being pushed. <laughs> he's an excellent drummer. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he's really good. You can tell him that from me. And uh, I, I will with absolutely some, I do with that. some good ones. I played with some good ones. So you certainly I mean, my, have. All, all my kids um, play. My youngest, who's actually here at the moment, is a piano player. Oh, okay. He's kind of classic uh, jazz, classical. You know, he did four years at music college. Um, he's twenty. He's twenty six now. Excellent. How many kids do you have? Four. You and me both. Yeah. Two boys, two my, girls. Well, my eldest daughter is a teacher. She doesn't. She doesn't play anything, but she's got a good taste. And then the next daughter. Down from her is a really good bass player, but she's she plays in a couple of bands, but of course they're not playing anywhere at the moment, so she's just doing her day job from home. And then Rowan, who's the one in London, who works works as an engineer. He he's a good guitar player. He's a better guitar player than he would let on. He can finger pick really well. You know, he's not like a blues screamer. Um, I, mean, I guess he's a bit of a jack of all trades like me, but he, you know, he's playing some great finger picking stuff. He can play all 
he learns stuff that I've written, finger picking style, and he can play the entertainer by Oh yeah. God Joplin, which I struggle and he you know he's good. But he spends a lot of his time engineering and um and doing that stuff. So yeah, we've got four, two of each. Yes, That's same all here. All the balance, like as I like to say, the balance of power has been secured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the boys are the bookends for me, and then the girls are in between. But and they're all home right now because of, you know, obviously the uh, the COVID situation. So all, yeah. I've got all four kids home, and my wife's working upstairs. So my my wife and my oldest daughter work upstairs in the attic, and then Dylan's downstairs. Of course, now he's out of the house doing something, and then I've got uh, another daughter who's doing school, uh, you know, summer school here at home, and then the other one's doing summer school it's crazy it's a madhouse but yeah. you know what it's good though it's it's actually kind of fun having them all at home well, my, my eldest lives in london she she's a teacher and she's back at work now but she teaches really tiny you know like three three to six year olds um and she lives in london with her husband she's 37 now so. oh okay you know and then the next one down 35 and then there was a big gap and then the boys are 20 uh, 28 tomorrow and um, 26. You know, I, I, I got to ask you this because <laughs> because I'm sure it's happened and I just want to bask vicariously in the glory of it. Growing up and you've got four kids, you've obviously been in situations sporting things with the kids or, you know, school functions or somewhere. You're surrounded by normies, people who aren't in the music business that look upon musicians as if, we're profligate mutants from some foreign land, which of course yeah, right. we are. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but how awesome must it be when you're sitting around? And, oh, you're in a band. Who do you play with? Well, that'd be Paul McCartney. I mean, how how much how awesome must that? <laughs> Was well, that a depends, good feeling or not? It depends. It depends on who believes you. You know, and uh, actually, that was, you know that was some time ago, right? And. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty good. I mean, it, it, it's always different, you know, because when I when I stopped playing with Paul, you know, he kind of laid us off. We we didn't get fired oh. or anything, but he laid us off in '94. You know, after the um, after the two big tours and you know live albums and, and um, unplugged and all that sort of stuff, and then he spent pretty much a year or so doing the Beatles anthology stuff. Oh, I got and then you. Lin and then Linda got sick. Oh, um, yeah. So, so, um, so it, it, was a, it was quite a long layoff, and then and then of course he rejigged the band with uh, with his American guys, you know, with with Abe and Rusty and and those and they, oh, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they're fantastic. So it's a bit. It's been a long time, you know. A lot of people, you know, I don't like to. Um, been a long time since I played with Paul McCartney. You know, I, I get a right. Christmas card from him every year, but I haven't spoken to him. I did one charity thing with him uh, back in the late nineties for the for the Monster app appeal. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, you know, it's been it's been uh, I won't say twenty years ago today because it's even longer than that. You know. Well, I'll tell you what, my, my, I did see you with Paul McCartney. I saw you at Milwaukee County Stadium, but I was a fan of yours long before that because I was a, a huge Pretenders fan. Oh, really? And, uh, uh -huh. it was just, it, and so I, I went to high school, you know, I was born in 1966. So I'm a senior in high school and I, I kind of was a boomer by default because I was the youngest of seven kids and I had a room with my brother who was, you know, 14 years old than I was. So I was into all kinds of different roots music, which literally, at least in my circles, no one my age was into any of that. It was pointy guitars. You know what I mean? It was either new wave or, or, or they were into rush or some kind of, you know, metal mutation, which, you know, is all well and good, but that's wasn't what I wasn't into. And, yeah. But I was a fan of the Pretenders, and then when Learn to Crawl came out, and you were playing on there, and it was Telly Strats, and then there was like, oh my god, he's got a three thirty five too, and I'd see some different things of you playing, and you, you were like my hero because I was like, here in the eighties, it's like everything is not roots oriented or any of that kind of stuff, and here comes this breath of fresh air. So I was a big fan from there on in. So well, I, I've always you. followed your career since then, and when when well, I saw I, Paul McCartney I, and you were playing, I was like, Robbie McIntyre. 